Good afternoon, everybody. Well, we are ready. Hallelujah. We're going to start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you, God, for who you are. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus, and we come, God, thanking you, God, for all that you have done and all that you're about to do. Father, we come, God, repenting, God, of our sin, of iniquities, oh God. Father, we ask now, God, that you forgive us, that you wash us in your blood, that you create in us, so oh God, your intercessors, clean hearts. And Father, put a right spirit in us in the name of Jesus. We ask God that you bless, so oh God, the teaching on today. We pray, God, that it fall on good soil. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that a new wave of intercession will come forth out of this place. And we pray, God, that the Holy Spirit will train your people, Father, to do the work of intercession. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we all should have our purple folders. And what we're going to do to, uh, tonight, this is a beginner's class on the tabernacle. It is teach, Lord, teach me how to pray. Lord, teach me how to pray. I know what I was thinking. Those that do not have a key to open the heavens book, I'm just going to let you borrow these for tonight. Uh, raise your hand and the children can get you a book. Okay, everybody. Um, Lord, teach us how to pray. This class is for beginners, so I will probably not teach this on the level that I used to teach it on. So I'm just going to be led by God how to teach it tonight. Amen? Amen. Okay. We're about to learn and also is going to be taught on a level where even the kids can understand. So we, we want y'all to pay attention. Because the Lord also wants to empower you all and teach you how to pray, okay? First of all, prayer is just communicating with God. That's what prayer is. Prayer is talking to the Lord. And just like you talk to a friend, you can have a conversation with God, okay? Okay. So we're on page 177, the tabernacle teaching. First of all, I want us to know the definition of tabernacle. Tabernacle means dwelling place, 
are tense of meeting. Book in the box in the box. Okay, tabernacle means dwelling place or tent of meeting. So let's start on page 177. Okay. Mm. It's actually, it's still, yeah, that's the, that's the new, uh, it's still here, but you just on a different page. You at the old book is 212. Did you have an old book? 212. You probably should have a new one. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 212 for the old version. Pages one. She got a new book. 177. She's 177. Okay. We ready? All right. So we're doing a um, beginner's class. Lord, teach us how to pray. And we're going to learn how to pray. Pray the pattern of the tabernacle. The tabernacle teaching is one of the most powerful teachings in the Bible. It's one of the most powerful teachings in the Bible. And if all of us know the Bible story, this is when God called Moses up to the mountain and he came back with instructions in Exodus. He came back with instructions. And we're going to start reading. Let's go to page 177. Those in the old book, I think it's 212. So the steps to transition from the ecclesia, ecclesia mean church. Steps to transition from the church are the bride of Christ unto authentic worship. Let's take a spiritual adventure and explore the order of faith in God. In order to enter into true worship, we began by giving him thanks, praise, confessing our sins and faults, repentance, turning from sin to God, prayer and intercession, and then worship God. God entrusted Moses with the assignment of having the tabernacles the, uh, I mean, having the Israelites build him a sanctuary so that he could dwell among his people. Yahweh, which means God the Father, was very specific how he desired the tabernacle to be built. I believe the earthly tabernacle was a shadow or copy of the tabernacle of heaven. Now let's go back over this. God the Father entrusted his servant, his prophet Moses, that he called to lead the people of, of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage. God entrusted Moses with a very heavy assignment. And his assignment was to have the people of God, the people of the kingdom, to build him a sanctuary. Now, what is a sanctuary? A sanctuary is a sacred place. A sanctuary is a holy place. So when God said, I want you to build me, have them to build me a sanctuary, he said, I need a sanctuary. I need a holy place where I can dwell among my people because God himself is holy. So the place 
have to be sacred. The place had to be holy. Also, it could have been a temple or a tabernacle. So God entrusted Moses with this assignment. A heavenly Israelite build him a sanctuary or a sacred place so he could dwell among them. I want y'all to know that it was always God's perfect plan and will to dwell among his people. God always desired a family. Do y'all hear that, kid? God always desired a family. God, God created us. God created us in his image. God created us in his likeness. God created us as his own. But what happened when the fall of man happened in the garden of Eden and sin that the Eve was deceived? When she was deceived by what children? The snake, the serpent in the garden of Eden. Eve was deceived or she was tricked. When she was tricked, the enemy thought he was going to steal God of the blessing of heaven to dwell among his family. That's what he thought. And remember, the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he come to do. So that's his nature. He's cunning like that. So he thought he was so much powerful and all knowledgeable, but God already all knowing, already had a plan already before the creation of the world that he was going to send his son in the earth to redeem back his family. God said, those are my people. I created them for me. Devil, you can't have them. They are my priests. They are my intercessors. They are my worshipers. They are not meant for your purpose. So, kid, you was created for the purpose of God. And Jesus Christ died to redeem you back to the Father in heaven. So, I want y'all to know the this tabernacle teaching is so powerful. We're going to get understanding step by step and learn how to pray it. Anytime you pray according to the tabernacle, keep this in mind. You can pray perfect prayer. Perfect prayer. Perfect. Because the Holy Spirit prays perfect prayers through us. And when we begin to learn this pattern that God established, Moses didn't establish this. This didn't come from Moses. This came from the mind and heart of God himself. He said, this is how you train my family to come before me. And he said, Moses, I'm very pacific. You got to tell them to make this dwelling place. Make this dwelling place exactly the way I show you. That's why we can't come before God any kind of way. In any kind of way. You know, a lot of times we can get out of order. And we think we got the right to say certain things to God and pray a certain way. But we're going to find out how when we do that, that strange fight. We're going to find that out in the scripture. And when something is strange in God's presence, God don't know it. It, it it's not the sweet aroma that he put in us. To bring before him. Okay. So. We got here. We got Moses on an assignment. And he says. I want to reside among my people. I want to reside among my family. I want to reside in Memphis. And Mississippi. We can make that personal. Yahweh was very specific. And he desired the tabernacle to be built. I believe the earthly tabernacle was a shadow or copy of the tabernacle in heaven. Did y'all know there's a tabernacle in heaven? So what tabernacle mean? Dwelling place, 
tenths a meter. Now I'm going to show you this. This here is a picture of the ten of meter. That when I put on this prayer shawl, God says, Rashida, go close the door and I want you to meet with me. The tabernacle was a movable tent. They traveled. It was a movable tent. They moved. So God said, when you pray, let your prayers be a sweet aroma between me and you. Even when we pray corporately, we need to act like we got on a prayer team. We ain't trying to impress you. We ain't trying to impress her. We are praying directly to our heavenly Father. This is a personal thing. This is a relationship with our God. This is intimacy. You can't, you can't come bother me right now. Stop patting me on my shoulder. Because I'm spending time with my father in heaven. The one that created me. This is my Abba father. This is my daddy. This is my family. Do y'all hear me? So, tips of meeting. Movable. Movable. And kids, you all can pray at any time. You can pray when you at school, when you got a headache, when you need help on a test. You can talk to God. You ain't got to sound like nobody at the church, but you talk to your father in heaven. You talk to him. Heavenly Father, help me. Give me the answers. Help me to focus a day at school. So you can talk to God. God can be any place at any time. Amen? Amen. Movable tent. So the tabernacle was a movable tent of me. God wanted to dwell among us. God wants to have fellowship and communicate with us day and night. Day and night. That's why now the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 19. It's 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. The scripture says, don't you know your body is a what? Your body is a what? Your body is a temple. The temple of who? And who is the Holy Ghost? Who? Who's the Holy Ghost? Make it even plainer. Who's the Holy Ghost? God. So, when we walk this earth, God says, my body, it don't even belong to me no more. Because Jesus purchased me at a price. He paid the cost to redeem my body back to my father. So when I walk around the earth, I want y'all to see the temple. I'm a movable tabernacle. I meet with God. I can be at the airport meeting with God. I can be at the grocery store meeting with God because I am the temple where God's spirit dwells. And that's why God is telling us that we can, that he can bring forth his kingdom through us. Because he in us. He said greater is he that is in me. Then he said he wanted to dwell among them. He wanted to be wherever they go. God with you now. He living in you now. He is 
agreeing with the teaching that the Holy Spirit, y'all better catch this, is teaching to us. He's in agreement with himself. And that's how it be when we pray. Y'all, we can always pray perfect prayers. God will always agree with himself. Always. But we have to get that revelation of who we are in Christ. Amen. Say we are a movable tent. Say we are a movable tent. I am the temple of God. I am the temple of God. Yes. We can manifest things because God is in us. Let us keep reading. Now, this was astonishing. As I've spoken before, there is a tabernacle in heaven, there's a dwelling place in heaven. There is a, a sacred place in heaven. And what God gave. Moses, it was a shadow of what is in heaven. So that's why Lucinda, he had to be careful that he gave the instructions the way God said it because it was a pattern of what was in heaven. Truth be told, we supposed to be praying prayers that line up with the pattern of heaven. There's, we don't supposed to be our cores. We don't supposed to be over there. That's when the enemy come in to bring deception and to bring distractions to get us off from for yielding to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit pray so God can respond back to what he said. That's how we can pray the perfect plan, perfect will of God in the earth. Let's keep going. Now Moses was given a divine blueprint from the designer of the universe to lay out the diagram of heaven. He was given heaven's pattern for the Israelites to construct and follow. Let's make this personal. If God have given you instructions he says, Rashida and Terrence put a church in Mississippi. That means we can't pick our own location. Do y'all hear me? If he tell you to start a business, you can't pick your own business. He already got the blueprint in heaven. So it's very important we follow the plan of God. That's why Every church got different administrations and how they do things. You can't come here thinking it's supposed to go like that church. The instruction, instruction, and order is different. And they have to follow the blueprint that God gave them. And everybody supposed to flow in accordingly. So this construction is part to Yeshua, which means Jesus. Who is the way, the truth, and the life? Who leads mankind to the Father? No one comes unto Yahweh, which is God the Father, but by his Son. Yeshua, which is Jesus. Kids, what does Yeshua mean? What does Yeshua mean? Jesus. Yeshua means Jesus. Say that. Yeshua means Jesus. Yahweh means the Father. Okay. Let them learn some Hebrew Greek. Yahweh came to fulfill what the blood of bulls and goats could not accomplish. Moses announced to all who were skilled to come make everything the Lord had commanded. Who commanded? The Lord. The people had to be careful that they made everything according to destruction given through who? Through Moses. This pattern was the template and heavenly prototype, which means model. This was the a heavenly model that was the way to the Father in order to behold his spotless 
presence. This was the way to the Father that God gave Moses. Even any type of assignment, I don't care if God told you to do a praise dance. There's a particular song he's going to put in your spirit. Those are particular moves that there's an anointing behind that he wants you to step into. But see, when you become that type of intercessor and that type of worshiper, you will get that detail with God because you really want the spirit of the Lord to minister to the people through you. So we got to follow the pattern God gave us. You got to follow the pattern God gave you for your particular life and your particular assignments. Okay. When the tabernacle was built, there was a gate put in place. So number one, the gate. As the Israelites began their journey to meet with God, there was a gate or an entry that they would go through. This gate represents Jesus. And the gate represents Jesus declared. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the door. I am the gate. I am the entrance of the sheep. And by me, if any man enters in, and by Jesus, if any man enters into this sheepfold, because remember, he's the good shepherd. If any man enters into the sheepfold, he shall be saved. So I want y'all to picture this. I want you to picture Jesus walking the earth. And he is preaching about the kingdom. He's telling people repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. So Jesus is walking the earth and he is preaching about the kingdom. So I want you to picture Jesus doing that walking the earth preaching. But I also want you to see him as he stand there, there's a door open. Do y'all see that? There's a door open inside of him. There's a door of eternal life where they can enter into because the word says Jesus is the way. See, God was so prophetic and so, so particular that when he told them to build this tabernacle, he was telling them direct way how to get to me. You got to go through the gate of my son. Then he sent them down here in manifestation of the tabernacle. He said, you got to come through this gate. I'm the only way you can get to the Father. I'm the way. I am truth. And I am eternal life. No one can come to the Father except they come through me. It says he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pastures. That's John 10 and 9. So when we go through the gate, when the sheep come to Jesus Christ, the word says we're going to find pasture. That means we're going to find some food. We're going to get fed by the good shepherd. He's going to take real good care of us. We're going to grow in the kingdom. We're going to bear good fruit. It also means growth, increase. He's going to supply us with true life. He said that's what you're going to find. When you enter through Jesus Christ. And he said, all that ever came before me was thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. The word of God tells us that the sheep that entered through Jesus Christ. He said, my sheep know my voice. And a strange voice. They will not follow. How they know my voice. Because they spend time with me. They spend time in the word. The more you spend time in the, the word of God, children, you will get familiar with God's voice. 
You will be able to discern his voice when he speaks. Because another way of knowing God's voice is through the gift of discernment. You discern him. You have knowledge of who he is because you spend time with him. Just like a mother. If Serenity Holloway across the street, if nobody else knows Serenity voice, the mama do. I hear Serenity. Somebody, nobody in the other house heard her. But because she don't spend time with her child, she know her voice. Same thing with God. We, we know his voice if we stay in the word. So Jesus is the only entrance, the door, the gate, our way into the kingdom of God. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. And broad, broad means spacious kids. Kids, I want y'all to listen to this. God says, enter through the narrow gate. Because there is a wide gate. So y'all know we walk this, this, this road called life. There's always two gates. There's a narrow one. When you come to Jesus, it's narrow. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's some stuff you're going to have to stop doing because it's so narrow. But in this thing called life, there's another gate and it's wide. The scripture says that it is spacious. That gate's so big. That gate is spacious. Then the word says, that gate is the road that leads to destruction. So the spacious gate will lead to perishing and ruin. Their life will be ruined. If they stay on the road that is spacious, then it says, and many enter through it. The word says many. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. And this is Bible. Only a few people is going to find the narrow gate. Going to want to stay at the narrow gate. But there's going to be many that's going to stay in the spacious gate. Amen. Let's keep going. Therefore, all ye people enter into his gates with thanksgiving. As the Israelites enter into this gate, they had so much to be thankful for. The gate was a metaphor of Jesus the Messiah who manifested in the earth to fulfill fulfillment of his plan to redeem them back to the Father. Through Jesus, man is able to gain access into the kingdom of heaven. As the people of God would enter into the gate, they would come in wearing garments of thanksgiving. May he who enters have a thankful heart for the works of Yeshua. Come here, sweetie. Come here, Ash. Hold this up for me. So everybody can see. I got this in you all's, um, a copy of this in the folder as well. So, this was the tabernacle that the Lord told Moses to build, of the, have the people to build him. Because he wanted to dwell among his people. So, when the people would enter into the tabernacle, they would enter right here through this gate. They would come right here through this gate. And I want y'all to notice that the gate got a fence around it. Anybody know why? Why why it has that fence around? Take a guess. Huh? You can come in one way. That's one way of looking at it. There was only one way. Very good. What's another reason? Look at look in your folders. And I want y'all to look at some of those pictures. Just flip through those pictures. As she said, one way entry. 
Jesus the only way. Yeah. <clears throat> As you flip through those pictures, what other reason why you believe this fence was up? Huh? She said, couldn't know anybody in her in. Amen. This was up for the people's protect protection. It was to protect them. They couldn't enter in no any kind of way. There was a particular way to get into God so wise and so loving. He didn't want the people just work and go in and go meet my uh aunt. -uh. God said, you know what? I'm going to put some up. <laughs> All these tribes, the, as you look at your picture, you're going to see the tribes. All the 12 tribes was all strategically sitting around the dwelling place of God. God strategically had each tribe at certain locations. God teaching us something. Right. Amen. In certain locations. So when they would enter into the gate, God is telling us when we come to pray, God is saying when we pray, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's why the minister feel his famous scriptures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So an example, when we first pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I come, God, thanking you, God, for this day. Father, I enter, God, into your gates, God, with thanksgiving. Father, I enter, God, into your courts with praise. Father, I thank you, oh God. I bless your name, God. And when you thank God, it needs to be from the heart. Amen. Because remember, picture yourself in a tent. We ain't praying to impress them. No, we really thanking God. God, I thank you. God, that you bless me. I thank you, God, for restoring me, God. So you go into a Thanksgiving prayer. We're teaching prayers that's going to get answered. This the real deal. Prayers that don't get answered. These prayers, these prayers, as y'all see, only thing we're going to discuss tonight is the outer court. But when we get out back in here, these prayers is going to really break yours. That every time you pray, the devil in hell is saying, I know them. Because that's the sound of the line of Judah. I'm very familiar with that territory. You better get back. Because something about to happen. Y'all already feel a roar. I feel a roar. I already feel a roar. Glory be unto God. I feel a roar in this place. Woo. So we enter into that gate. We're going to come with some thanksgiving. Not only in prayer, but also when we come into the house of the Lord. And, and a lot of times this has to be trained. Everybody sitting down. They act like they ain't got nothing to give God praise for. Nothing to give God thanks for. Nobody should have to tell us to thank God. Another thing that we're going to learn when we enter into the gate, we're going to enter into also his courts with a praise. Now, let me tell you what happened because another way how you can thank and praise God, one of the most powerful things, husband, I just need you to clap. Just clap. Your clap. Give thanks and praise to God. And you know what clap means? You know what clap means in, 
the Hebrew Greek, in the Hebrew, this is what clap means. When we actually clap, the scripture says that my people perish. I'll be seeing you on the line. Hey. hey. <laughs> when we clap, this is what happens in the spirit realm. This is what clapping do. The devil, the reason why, he'll have some people so bowed down, so low. They still look, they still don't want to clap and they still don't want to shout. They still look at all the other folk. It, it don't even take all that. If you would just clap, move around, right. give God a sacrifice of praise. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Our clap. What you need? You have to go in the cabinet. Okay. She need a pen. Oh, that's okay. I got one right here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our clap means that when we clap, we are giving the enemy a blow. We're striking him. We're giving him a blow. I see you, woman of God. You always do it. <laughs> You're giving him a blow. You are striking him. It's like blowing a trumpet with your hands in the enemy's ear. Let us, let us all clap. Joshua 6 and 20. 
don't have to put it up. I can read it. Let me let me show you how powerful shouting is. Everything you do on the natural have a spiritual effect. Joshua 6 and 20. I'm reading the NIV. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, a loud shout, guess what happened next? The wall came down. The children said the wall collapsed. When God said, give him a radical shout, a radical praise, don't you know what can happen? And you know what? I can confirm that this is true because Terrence and I tried it. <laughs> we don't really try this. Yes. We tried this. And when we tried it, we got $30,000. <laughs> we tried this. Because God, God word works. I'm telling time my prayers where you're gonna get results. Amen. It works. We got 30,000. Cause we looked at foolish to our neighbors <laughs> walking around our house with some play and walk, 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 and then go shout. At night. At night. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with them folks? My neighbor kept trying to get me, but she, you know somebody that can buy my house. We was too much for them. They moved back. Back to Nashville. Wow. But this work, the walls collapse. And the scripture says, the wall collapsed, so everyone was charged straight in. And guess what happened? They took the city. Y'all know how we say it, T-Bob? Take the city. Take, take the city. <laughs> We find out some strategies how we gonna take the city. Right. And what it's all about, we are truly giving God all the praise, all the honor due unto him. And we're thanking him for the victory in advance. You getting tired, Ashley? I switch you out. I switch you out. <laughs> so the gate as the Israelites began their journey to meet with God there was a gate or entry they would go through so we read that go to we still on page 178 consequently that paragraph the Israelites had to enter the gate of the tabernacle with a sacrifice before God the animal sacrifice was presented as a substitute to die in the person place as he would acknowledge his sins before God. God required animal sacrifice to provide a temporary covering of sins and to foreshadow the perfect and complete sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because why? Sin had to be paid for. For the wages of sins are the payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin had to be paid for. So guys, when the, the Israelites, when they would enter to that gate, they would come with thanksgiving. They would be thankful unto God. They would give them praise. And they would enter into that court courtyard with praise. As they enter into this courtyard, Shemekah, there was priests on assignment that was going to assist them. And when the um, Israelites would come, they couldn't come empty-handed. They couldn't come empty-handed. They had to come with an offering before God. So this I'm going to use as an offering. They had to come with an offering before God. So when they would come through that gate, the gate represent who? Jesus Christ. Kids, 
The gate represent who? United. Who? Jesus Christ. So when, when you come to God, what type of offering do you need to come with? An animal? <laughs> what kind of offering do you need to come with? What kind of offering can you come with to God? Can you come giving him a thank offering? Can you come thanking him? Mm -hmm. You can thank him. You can praise him. You can clap for him. Okay. So they will come through the gate with an offering. Let us keep reading. And the reason why they will bring this offering to the, is called brazen Lay, not brazen label, the brazen altar. They will bring it to the altar of the Lord was because sin had to be paid for. The animal sacrifice was presented as a substitute to die in the person's place. Because remember, what did God tell Adam and Eve in the garden? Told them don't eat from their what? Uh huh. And when they ate of that tree, why did he tell them don't eat from that tree? He said, if you do, you will surely what? Die. And because they disobeyed, they died spiritually. Right. They were disconnected from God. Right. They died a spiritual death. That's why God said we got to be born again. Right. Y'all understand now the pattern of being born again now. Not a natural birth, but a spiritual birth. Because in the beginning, we was already born of God. You know they born of God walking the earth naked. <laughs> you know they were born of God. They didn't know no sin. They didn't know no sin. But as soon as they ate that tree, they got knowledge. That was an attempt for them to have. Right. Because they were made perfect in God's image. So because God could not lie in what he said. He said, if you eat from that tree, you're going to die. You're going to be spiritually disconnected from me. That's why the scripture says now, the wages of sin. One day, people going to pay for they sin if they don't turn and come through the gate. Right. You're going to pay for sin. Sin may look fun right now. Sin may look like a heaven fun. We all have done. It. May seem fun, but it's a cost to pay eventually if you don't come through the gate. Right. So that's why uh, uh, the father's plan to redeem them, he said, you know what? Satan think he gonna rob me from my family. <laughs> uh-uh. I'm about to get Miss Doris Bridge for back. I'm about to get Rashida. I'm putting my name in there. Rashida <laughs> Davis back. <laughs> y'all better, y'all better speak your name out there. Uh -uh. Huh? What you say? Shoot. I'm speaking my name out there. I'm getting my people back. I'm getting my people back. And he said that when they will bring this offering, this was going to be a substitute for the wages of sin. You can sit down and ask you for a while. For the wages are the payment of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus our Lord. Jesus manifested in the earth to take care of the sin of mankind once and for all. Without the shedding of blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. That's a reason to pray to God right there. There is no need for man to bring a sheep or a goat, so you don't have to bring an animal. Alexander, you don't have to bring an animal to God now. Because <laughs> he said he'd bring an animal. He saw the little thing here. The Messiah paid, became man's substitute on the cross. 
So who became our substitute was Jesus Christ. He paid the penalty of death that we deserve. He died in our place. And guess what? Then he went to prepare a place for us. He died in our place. Right. Then he went back up. Right. You have to get it ready. In the holy of holiness, holy of holiness, that's what we're trying to learn how to pray in that realm. He in the holy of holiness prepared a place. He getting my mansion again. All right now. Man. He know what I like, Shamika. All right now. Yeah. He know what I like. He getting our mansion together. Let me tell you another job. Two other jobs he got that he doing right now for us. Y'all talk back to me. Make an intercession. He's our intercessor. You mean we got a personal intercessor in heaven? Uh -huh. Lord. You won't touch Rashida. Right. I I put my I put my brother on. I got a big brother. Amen. All his prayer, all his prayers get answered. <laughs> He's the son of the living God. I'm his sister. Yeah, I am his sister. <laughs> we got the same dad. Join I want God to make it plain so we can know when we pray who we serve and who is petitioning on our behalf. So we have a personal intercessor and the personal intercessor he teaches us how to intercede. He teaches us. Not only is he prepared a place and he's our personal intercessor, what other role he got? Just one more. What other role Jesus got, children? It's okay to be wrong. Y'all in school, we get corrected. Say what you think. What you say? What you say? Overseer. Overseer? Yeah, kind of. I like that. How you Overseer. I didn't know you knew that word. <laughs> Glory. Don't come again. He's the soon coming king, but the particular one I'm looking for. High priest. High priest. High priest. High priest. And we're going to see in the pattern of the tabernacle how that relates to how we pray. He's our high priest in heaven. High priest, intercessor, he's preparing a place for us. I mean, only the priest could be in the outer courts. And, the, you know, the priest was in the holy place, but only the high priest, as you said, is in the holy of holiness. And Jesus, that's what he is now. So that's why the pattern of the tabernacle is a copy of what's in heaven. It's powerful. It's powerful to follow this pattern when we pray. Real powerful. Okay, he died in our place and went to prepare a place for us. Right here is an excellent time to give him thanks from your heart. Let's go to two. Hallelujah. As the Israelites enter the gate with a sacrificial offering, I hope they can hear me good on that. As the Israelites enter the gate with a sacrificial offering, they will walk into a courtyard or an enclosed, a place surrounded by a fence that has the tabernacle. Remember, as Miss Felix said, it was for protection mm -hmm. because anybody could not just go in there unordered. Right. So it was for their protection. Now, remember, too, now, you all going to get tested. Make sure you take a note. <laughs> We're going to take tests and everything. <laughs> Not tonight. We're going to have some time to study, meditate, and get some understanding. This is a picture of the church, the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is entering into the gate, entering into the courts, entering into the presence of the king. Mm -hmm. We're coming through the bridegroom. We're coming through the bridegroom, meaning Jesus. 
This is a picture of the church, the bride of Christ, entering to his courts with praise, with a um, hymn of song. So another way we can praise God is through song. We can praise God with a song. Being thankful unto him and blessing his name. As the Israelites prepared themselves before entering to the divine holiness, they will take a pause at the brazen altar. Everything the Israelite was instructed to do in the earthly tabernacle had a spiritual purpose. This is why they had to make sure they carried this pattern out to the letter as God had given it to Moses. I think the battery low or something on here. Um, the things you do in the natural have a spiritual effect or consequence behind them. Let's go down to in the court, in the outer court. In the outer court, to me, this is one of the most important pieces of the tabernacle, is this brazen altar. In the outer court, the Israelites saw the brazen altar, which signified a raised place where sacrifices was made to offer to slaughter, slay, or kill. The Israelites will enter through the gate, the door of Jesus, the door of the kingdom, or the gate of the kingdom, which represented Jesus, with their sacrificial offering into the courtyard. The priest will be there to assist the Israelites with the sacrifice as he proceeded with his priestly duties. Now the high priest, he will be at the Holy of Holiness. The high priest was looked upon as a mediator between God and the people. And he, talking about the people, the people shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering. So when the people would go through the gate, go through the door of the tabernacle, they would come with a sacrifice because something had to die in their place. Sin had to be paid for. And as sin is paid for, the priest will be standing around to assist them. So if I wanted my sins, if I wanted my sins forgiven, I would take this offering and I would lay my hand on that animal. Mm -hmm. And I would confess my sin unto God. Father, forgive me, God. Father, God, for selfishness. God, forgive me, oh God. God, for not loving my husband as I should. Forgive me, God, for the way I have treated my neighbors. I will do all this confessing of my sin. And as I lay hands and confess the sin, those sins will transfer now to this innocent animal. Animal ain't did no wrong. But this was a substitute because who was coming in the animal place? Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And y'all know Jesus did no wrong. But when he went to the cross, that was almost an altar for the whole world. That he bared all of our sins. So the whole world's sins was transferred to the body of Jesus. He took every whooping that we deserve. Amen. So that's the purpose of why God said in order in order uh, for me, for me, for them to dwell, me to dwell among them, they have to copy what's in heaven. That's why that tabernacle was put in place. So, the head of the offering, and it shall be God said, and it was acceptable unto him that it made atonement for that person. So now, the, this animal is on the altar. Now, God look at it, is guilty. So, now what has to happen to the, to the animal? What happened next? You gotta get slaughtered. He got to die. Because what God said in the beginning to Adam and Eve, You're going to die. 
So, poem, day. Go what I did. Did. Died, and then there was blood. Right. Right. All shed on that altar. Think about the cross. When Jesus on that cross, and he took my sins, your sins on that cross, prophecy had to be fulfilled. What came, what came flowing out of his body? What, what they had to do? They pierced him. Blood and water. Ooh, we're going to get this revelation. We're about to get it. We're about to get this revelation. But this is what happened at the brazen altar. So that blood was shed. What did the scripture say? God says without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission, no forgiveness of your sin unless somebody die. So let me tell you something about our advocate, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. His blood, it got a voice. Yes. His blood speaks for me. Amen. He said, devil, get back. Yes. She's not guilty. Hallelujah. Because when God see the blood, hey, God, when God see the blood, yes. when God see the blood of his son Hallelujah. applied to me, yes. God said not guilty. Because you got to remember, we got accuser of the brother. The enemy accuses us before God day and night. He find any little crack he can. If you cuss in your head, he coming after you for that. If you mistreated somebody, anything, but we make a habit to repent. We make a habit to repent. I'm watching my time. <laughs> Let's go to page 180. The word of the Lord also states in Leviticus 1, 5 through 7. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord. This is the man. And then Aaron's sons, the priest. Remember I told you priests have to be there at the altar. Then Aaron's sons, the priest shall bring should be the next page. You got it? Aaron's son, the priest. 215 for those in the other book. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall bring the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar at the entrance of the tent of meeting. You are to skin the burnt offering and cut it to pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, are to put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Why do you think God also wanted them to, they, they already slaughtered the animal. Now God said, put fire on it. Put fire on it. What could y'all think of? Right. Okay, I see where you're going with that. Who want to add to it? Because when you ask for forgiveness, as she said, God don't bring it up again. What does fire do? It, it's really bad. Know what she's saying? Purify. It's burning it out. Is destroying sin's power. What well, the enemy think he can bring it up 
And God said, I am the consuming fire. Do y'all hear me? I am the consuming fire. Say it and get back. Because I'm bringing my people back to me. And God teaching us how to pray that way. Bold prayer, strong prayers. I tell people all the time, pray a strong prayer. And a strong prayer ain't got nothing to do with you praying loud or soft. Ain't got nothing to do with that. You praying with all your heart. That's a strong prayer. You praying with all of your heart, all your mind, all your soul to God with the right intent. Your motive is right. You hear that's a strong prayer. Whether it's low or whether it's loud. When you in the tent of meeting with God, he hears it. And he gonna answer. So it's not in the levels of the sound. Okay, the offering that was made at the brazen altar was a prophetic picture of Christ who offered himself to the Father on our behalf to make us what? Huh? Clean. She got it. What's another word for clean? Pure. What's another word for pure? Holy. Holy. All that the same thing. You said it right. Keep this in mind. That's why God said, Rashida, your righteousness is nothing but filthy ratings. Yeah. That's why we can't get to God on our own. He said, you saved by grace. It is not from self works It ain't how good you pray or how this and that. He said, look, look back at this, look at this. And see, y'all, this will keep us humble when we go before God. Because it ain't got nothing to do with us. Our degrees, our status, ain't got nothing to do with it. He said, the offer made at the brazen altar was a prophetic picture of Christ. Who offered himself to the Father on Rashida's behalf to make me holy. Jesus did that so we could be a priesthood of kingdom priests, a royal priesthood to make us holy. We made holy by his blood. His blood cleanses us and washes us. He is the mediator and high priest who intervened in order to make or restore peace, fellowship, friendship, and ratify a covenant. This reveals the beautiful love story and plan of redemption for mankind. The pattern given to Moses was a foreshadow of how the Son of God will fulfill and have now fulfilled what the blood of animals could not do. For life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make atonement or reconciliate the soul. So the blood is the one that brings us back close to God. So the blood speaks on our behalf. I'm jumping down. Therefore, Jesus' perfect blood was the only atonement. This is why Jesus came and fulfilled what the Father desired and what the blood of animals could do. Man need the DNA of the Son of God upon their life. We need that DNA. I tell people all the time, and I let the devil know, royal blood is running in my veins Because I'm born of the kingdom. Royal blood is in my vein because the king is in me. Now, we learn how to pray going to the gate. How we pray now at the brazen altar. Tell me what y'all think. We just described what happens at that altar. 
So through the gate, we come through Jesus Christ. We give him thanks. We give him praise. And now the prayer shifts on. Now we're coming to the altar. How do we pray? Repentance prayers. What else? She said weeping. Prayers of tears. Because we are coming with a sacrifice. I want y'all to write these down. We come to the brazen altar, number one, to confess our sin. Remember, when they came, they had to confess their sins and lay hands on that animal. So we're going to come first to that altar. We're going to confess our sins. Now, back in the day, I didn't understand. They would say, come down to the altar. Ain't know what that really meant. I just thought they talking about the pulpit. Because I didn't have no understanding. I had no understanding what they meant. Come to the altar. So when we say come to the altar, bring your confessions to God. Confess your sins, number one. Number two, also what's going to happen at this altar it's time for Rashida to put to death the, flesh. the works of the flesh. I got to crucify. Did, when Jesus crucified, Amen. he was crucified on the altar of the cross. So I got to also crucify my flesh. I need to put to death the old man, the old nature, my old ways. But I'm bringing it to God. Because God is a what? Consuming fire. Amen. He can burn it out. If I'm sincere. He can burn it out of me. Number three. This is a new one that the Lord told me to add for this teaching. Because I don't think I ever taught it with this before. Another thing that can happen at the altar. Deliverance. Deliverance. That means I'm about to get set free from things I'm struggling with. So I'm about to let God crucify, put an ax to pride, rebellion, offense, unforgiveness, selfishness, disobedience, whatever it may be. Because so many people, so many people, they come. And they do the work of the Lord. But they ain't been to the altar of heaven. They ain't been to God's altar. They ain't crucified in some areas. They'll come to church. And still don't like the pastor. They offended about something that was preached. The last Sunday. I know he was talking to me. <laughs> that was God talking to you. You get mad at the preacher. Offended. And have not learned how to come to the altar of heaven to get rid of all that stuff. And then they'll get the mic. They know they ain't in no holy of holies. They, they ain't made it to no altar in sin. The angels looking down, God looking down. With the world. <laughs> they saw what? Out of order. Strange fire. They gifted. I anointed them. But they, they passed the altar. They don't went in the holy place. <laughs> Pastor, I got a word. You do? God told me you ain't been to the altar. I did go. Which one? <laughs> but if we paint in this picture because this is real life. And the Lord don't want us trampling in the blood and treating it unholy. So he wants us to do what's right at that altar. So we have to come to that blood, that uh, that altar. The fourth thing at the altar, I want y'all to add. At the altar, we can offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. 
We can come and offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, y'all know that's going to be a test question. I'll let y'all you know. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy. Acceptable. Acceptable. Pleasing unto God. Before you, we can even go to the label. We got to accomplish this. And guys, we got to do this daily. 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 So an example of brazen out to prayer. Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus. God, asking Father that you will forgive me, God, of my sin, of my iniquity. And you can call out from personal sin. Then you can say, God, I come. Father, in Jesus' name, asking God that you destroy to the root. Destroy to the root. Right. You want it to be to the root. Right. Amen. Father, destroy to the root. Father God, all pride in me, all stubbornness in me. You in a tent. You, this between you and God. It, it got to come from here. God, take it out. Father God, offense, so God. You come into God with all of your heart. These are strong prayers. And, and you asking God to do a crucifixion in you. Let me tell you too in the natural how the Lord would do this too. Say you got the sin of the mouth. You love to gossip. You just love to gossip. And the Lord been dealing with you. You got to bring that tongue to the altar. You know you talk too much. You were pieced up. You shouldn't say. Well God be getting excited. You know, you just over talk. You know, that's, that's coming into you, you borderline and slandering people and gossiping. You repeat too much. So this is kind of too in the natural how the Lord will kind of deal with us. He will he will point out that sin of what you need um, to be worked on. I need to be rooted out. He will lead you sometime to scriptures on the tongue. Because as we begin to study the next one that talks about the labor, we're going to find out that is the place of washing. And you're going to find out that is the place where we get washed through the word of God. So I want you to keep in mind, the word of God is almost like a soap. It can cleanse you of things that is not right before God. So sometimes God will take you to the mirror of his word and he will tell you okay this word right here I want you to begin to apply it in your life you know how people say I want you to live holy but you don't even know how to live holy so the Lord began to teach you how to live holy how to live set apart from the world he'll make it simple you know the conversation you used to have don't have that no more you know, those group of people right there, they got cancer in their mouth. I want you to cut this part of going back to the altar. He dealt with the root. See, I want to make it all so natural to us. He will cut it off to the root. He said, cut it off to the root. I'm disconnecting you from that group of people because they are rooted in some areas that I have not planted you in. Does that make sense? So no, not only do we pray this way, there, there comes a lifestyle with it. There comes a lifestyle with it. I don't think I'm going to go to the labor tonight. I'm going to stop it right here. I feel led to stop right here. We're not going to go deep into the labor. I know y'all taking good notes. <laughs> but we're going to stop it right there. And I'm going to make room for any questions. For so far, we got to the um, the altar. We're still in the outer court. And we got some people, they are still out of court believers, uh, uh, even out of court intercessors or out of court ministers. They have not even made it to the holy place yet or the holy of holiness. Amen. So, any questions so far about the gate and the brazen altar? 
Next week, we will pick up on the labor and we'll go into the holy place and we'll see how far the Holy Spirit will take us. Huh? Next week. I mean, not next week. Thank you. October the 21st. Will be that it's every two weeks. I know I'm stopping a little early. I just wanted a few questions. Anybody got any questions? What is the tabernacle? Mm -hmm. Dwelling place. A moving tent. Tent of meeting. When we go to meet with God, what is the purpose of the hedge around? For protection. And that's why, too, we start doing sections on intercession, when we start learning about how intercessors build a hedge of protection around different places that we're praying for. We got to understand it. Going through the gate represent who? We enter in through Jesus Christ. And when we come through that gate, we come with what? Thanksgiving We come with thanksgiving and praise. So when you go back to your house tonight, enter in with thanks. When you go to your church services, Sunday and Saturday, wherever you worship, now you know you need to come in with what? Thanksgiving You need to come in with thanksgiving and praise. What does clapping mean? Striking the enemy, giving him a blow. What is a shout? How powerful is a shout? Yes. When you shout, you strip the enemy ears. And then I'm going to say this too. Y'all know demons can hear, right? Just study scripture. Jesus talked to demons all in the Bible. And they, son of man, you come to torment us for full time? Jesus spawned back, they respond back, they hear. So yes, you, you give a certain shout to certain demons, they will lose you. Sometimes your weapon will be a shout where depression can lead. Sometimes we pray for somebody, just shout. And they give the most wild shout they could give from the Lawrence. Because God is using that as a weapon. The Lord says that he chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And it brings break, breakthrough and deliverance. Okay, next question. What about um, the brazen altar? What's the four things that take place there? Mm -hmm. Deliverance. Crucify. 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 And offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is the most important piece because sin cannot dwell in the presence of a holy God. We, we're not going to get anywhere if we don't take care of the sin issue. Either whether you're going to find out too in scripture where the people was uh, doing ministry and serving God, trying to do service unto the Lord, but they was not clean. So God want even our hands to be clean, our heart to be clean, our motive and our intent to be clean before we do services unto the Lord. Everybody clear? We got it so far. How to pray a perfect prayer. Now, when I say perfect prayer, you know, I'm talking about the spirit of God. Because yeah. uh, we can't play, pray it in our flesh. And also, this is a place, too, where we really let God deal with any sin issues, any issues in our heart at the brazen altar. Any issues, any defect, anything that would hinder the rivers of living water from flowing in our lives. Because we found out we are a temple. We are temple. And by us being a temple, and it's going to be more in the part of worship that we're going to discuss. By us being a temple, there are rivers 
on the inside of us. The scripture says, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. So there are rivers, spiritual rivers inside of the temples of God. But the rivers can't flow, woman of God, freely if something is clogging it up. Amen. We gotta go back to the altar. Amen. Go back to the altar. Go back to the altar. We got to go back to the altar. I know every time when I need to go to the altar. No prophet got to tell me. <laughs> no evangelist. If you've been walking with God long enough, you should know when you need to go to the altar. Your altar can be anywhere. At home. At church. Driving your car. Just as long as you make your tent, your tabernacle, the place where God is so he can dwell because God wants that river flowing, yeah. right? Because somebody need, when we get to start talking about worship, this is how we're supposed to be. Walking the earth, because we the tent. I'm in Walmart. It just river flowing out of me. Getting the ground wet. People I'm talking to getting wet. Getting wet in God's presence. Amen. Getting wet in the presence of God. Because God want to bring them life. He want them to have abundant life. You don't have to stay in the state you in. God want a pure river flow that coming really from the throne of God to the land. That's what God wants. But what's stopping the flow is because the altar, we got to get that clean. Last announcement as well. Um, after the tabernacle teaching, we're going to have a um a service Friday night those that can come on a Friday night prayer night and we're going to be dressed in all white and we're going to be represented as the bride of Christ and we're going to truly truly going to have uh, praise and worship here uh, we truly truly is just going to believe God to birth in a wave of intercessors in the earth that hell will fear and tremble. Amen. We want to, to um, bring in a pure, authentic new wave. Do y'all hear me? Amen. So after we go through these teachings and we let God do a work in us, we don't want nothing coming up out of us. Us. We want it all Holy Spirit. And we want, we want God to take the city. We want God to take the region. Because the, the, the backbone of any ministry, is my opinion, in any city is prayer. That, that's just my personal opinion. And the reason why I truly believe that, Jesus is sitting at office today. Amen. It's one of the most powerful positions that the church can offer to the world. Our intercession. But we got the birth that back in. We got too many intercessors that's up. But don't go to the altar day. You can't correct me. I, I've been teaching intercessory, I don't know for how many years, and I still go to classes to other people that teach on intercession because I don't know everything. I don't know everything. He ain't gave you everything. We need each other. And those, and those things have to be broken through pure intercession. Get the right teaching, get equipped the right way, and God can take over our city. All right. To God be the glory. If there's no question, may we stand and we'll leave a little early. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Give me your name. Demetrius. I think I prayed you before then. Uh-huh. Uh -huh.
I'll take the books back up. <laughs> Kids, could you get the books back up for from those uh, that was borrowed for tonight? Mama paid for her book. <laughs> she had a book for a while. She doing her job. Mm -hmm. Give me your name again. Miss Kimberly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I mean, so it, it came to me. I don't know why I asked you. I see you all the time on Facebook. It came straight to me. Okay, that's Miss Kimberly. Green Foster. Yes, Foster Green. Yes. Foster Green. I know what you're seeing on Facebook. Everybody know Lucinda. Miss <laughs> Felix, Miss Bridgeport, Miss Donna, Miss Jefferson, Shamika. Tiriana. I know. Tiriana. Okay, I heard it. Okay. <laughs> I know I wasn't going to say it right. I know her name, I'm going to say it right. And all the children. We thank y'all so much for coming tonight. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We glorify you. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, for being in our midst. Father, we ask, God, that you will forgive each of us, including the children of our individual sins. Father, forgive us, oh God, for sins of the thoughts, sins in our heart, sins in our mind. And we ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, God, to root it out, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, of everything that's not like you. Father, we ask, God, that you will speak to our children. You will speak to our grandchildren. Father, that you, oh God, will speak even to our great-grandchildren, oh God. And Father, that you, Heavenly Father, that you will process them through God, the tabernacle, Father. That we can, oh God, be a generation of intercessors that's after your own heart. Father, we ask, God, that you breathe on us tonight. Father, help us, God, not just to hear this word. Help us, God, to be a doer of your holy word. We ask, God, that you in the name of Jesus, God, will bring more intercessors, God, in the house. Father, that they will get equipped. Father, it doesn't matter, God, what church we belong to. We all, Heavenly Father, is connected to you, the head of the body of Christ. Father, equip us. Father, anoint us. Purify us, O oh God. Creating us all a clean heart and renewing us, so God, a right spirit. Father, I ask, let the blood of Jesus now, God, be applied to our name. That the enemy, God, cannot bring false accusations. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, for a blessed night on tonight. Father, God, that we will rest in your presence, oh God. And we will wake up, oh God, giving you, God, the glory that you deserve. Father, we give you honor. All the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. You all are the best. We will see you on the 20, 21st.